A few years ago, we saw the introduction of automation in the customer service space in the form of IVR systems. And now we have conversational AI, which takes automation to a whole new level. Today, we have bots with integrated automatic speech recognition, natural language processing, and deep learning capabilities that can converse with customers in multiple languages. So is conversational AI the real disruptor in the customer service space today? To answer that and more, we have with us Ganesh Gopalan. Ganesh, welcome. First up, what is driving the shift to conversational AI in the customer service space today? All right, thanks, Ganesh. Uh, Ramarko. And uh, see, today nobody is really happy with customer service. If you take, uh, you know, the employees, uh, you know, it's, a, it's not a great profession to be in. If you take uh, customers per se, end customers, I mean, we don't like these long wait times. We don't like the quality of customer service we get. We always complain about the training that the folks have got. If you take enterprises, they are always complaining about you know, the efficiency or the huge cost of customer service. And they keep saying, can I just take this customer service away? Right? And uh, so uh, for a long time, people wanted to solve this, right? And today the technology is in place. So the advancements of speech and natural language processing have made automated customer service a reality. And uh, this is why today is the right time for enterprises to go ahead and get into automated bots instead of manual customer service. Right. Uh, but Ganesh, empathy is also a key aspect of customer service, right? So how can this be weaved into AI? I mean, how can AI be made more humane? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, if you take a typical contact center solution, right? I mean, uh, typically you have like 70% of inquiries that are like routine. And there are about 30% or 25% inquiries that are like involve persuasion, empathy, and a bunch of other things. Personally, let's get this 75% out of the way because all these routine kind of inquiries can be very easily converted to automated bots. Now, when you go into that 25%, right, you have to evolve the persona of the bot. And that's extremely important. Let me give me an example, right? I mean, we work, for example, with collection bots for a number of fintech companies. Right. In the early days of the lockdown, the persona of the bot was, hey, you know, it should be kind, it should be caring, right? And it should more ask about the health of the family and a bunch of other things, right? Mm -hmm. And just as an offhand thing, you know, hey, what, if you are interested in, uh, you know, paying, you can do this using this link. That's what the bot would say. It would answer a number of questions that the people had about the moratorium, the impacts and all. Be more informational, but you know, kind of slowly, kind of pushing into the, you know, the uh, uh, the collection way. Today, right, collection is the most important thing for fintech companies, right? So the bot has evolved quite a bit. Now the focus is, hey, you know, how can we collect better, right? So the persona of the bot changes quite a bit. Uh, so when I say persona, it involves a bunch of different things. Like what kind of accents do we use? Do we use a male or a female voice? Is that is the bot going to speak as a person in his 40s or a lady in her 30s? So a bunch of these things, but it's also a lot more than that. It's also more on, you know, what kind of words do you use, right? Do you really push or, you know, you're softer and kinder and a bunch of... So there's obviously a whole sort of things that, you know, we get into when we work with customers. And, uh, you know, it's a great phase to be in where we're making our uh, bots more and more humanoid and more responsive to customers. Very interesting. Uh, if you could just elaborate this on a little, uh, on, on this point a little bit more, you know, I just want to understand how much can you stretch the limits with this sort of a platform? And also curious to understand the limitations and risks that are involved. Yeah, I mean, so today we are, uh, you know, working with a number of companies to automate a lot of functions. This could be just your complete inbound customer service, right? Mm -hmm. If you take inbound customer service, like if you take a bank, I mean, these are like typical set of say, you know, say about 5,000 inquiries, let's say in a shorter, smaller bank, maybe about 100 inquiries uh, that or 100 intents that people are calling in for. On an outbound side, we work a lot with uh, particular use cases, like you know, it could be collection, could be appointment booking, could be feedback, surveys, you know, bunch of those things, right? 
Lead qualification, for example, is a very interesting use case we're working with customers. Now, when it comes to uh, you know solving some of these problems, all these things are great, right? And but hey, you know a lot of people think you know AI is magic, right? And uh, I can ask uh, you know anything from you know do you think Biden would win the election or would it be Trump? And the bot is supposed to answer, but it doesn't work that way, right? I mean, a good example of the question that you ask is with GPT three. Uh, the models that were put out by OpenAI for GPT-3. If you look at it today, they are really worried. Uh, Firstly, it very, looks very powerful at the outset. They are worried that you know if they just release the models out, it would be just fake news everywhere, right? Because it can just almost try to answer every question that you put to it. Obviously, once you start using it, at least the way it is today, you realize, hey, you know, yes, based on the training data that they have used. Because they use, for example, a lot of Reddit training data, and that tends to be a little more abusive and in the face, right? So there are obviously, you know, the way to reuse that is to have the models and you know tune the models and stuff. But they are really worried about releasing that out to the public. Let's suppose GPT three comes out to the public as a model for people to use. It, I mean, you just could find fake news all over the place, and you know, almost a humanoid kind of experience. So there are obviously risks to all this stuff, but I think today, uh, when it is to solve a specific problem or a specific bunch of problems, especially involving uh, customer service and you know bunch of those things around that, uh, this these are like great tools and mediums. Right, and Ganesh, are there particular sectors which are more open to adopting conversational AI for uh, customer service? See, first and foremost, it's like all, each and every sector is looking at digital transformation, right? And the first thing is like you know, five years back, a lot of companies did a lot of things around back office automation, mm -hmm. you know, with automation anyway and those products. But now is the time for this to get into the front office, right? And this is uh, a golden opportunity for companies in terms of industries. Uh, obviously, among the biggest spenders are the BFSI kind of customers, the so banking, mm -hmm. financial services and insurance. Uh, obviously, they, you know, obviously they have more risks, so they tend to move a little slower. But, uh, you know, that's where the maximum number of projects are coming from. The second one here is, I would say, uh, interesting things that are happening, for example, in the FMCG space, uh, where they're trying to use these automated bots to, you know, automate or to reduce the information gaps, right, mm -hmm. in the supply chain. So all this again kind of ties into uh, you know all this stuff moving towards a more you know the contactless world that we are in today, right? and uh, it's a great uh, you know it's great to see a lot of this moving out of the you know boardrooms where you know all these discussions used to take place, and now it's actually with uh, people on the ground. Right, and uh, considering India's diversity and complexity. Would you say we are ready as a market to accept AI-based customer service bots or are we are still sometime away from a sort of a full-scale deployment? So, like I said, uh, you know, uh, things have moved beyond the boardrooms and into actual implementations today. I mean, we realize that several customers, uh, you know, for very, very interesting kind of use cases, right? And uh, it obviously, uh, you know, the opportunities are immense in this space when companies are looking at, you know, hey, I can actually do savings of say 75% for a particular process. Right? So we are looking at like huge benefits that companies are seeing when they implement. Like with one, uh, you know, collection process that we are doing for, uh, you know, a particular, uh, you know, fintech company, uh, we are seeing benefits to the customer of almost 82%, right? And, uh, you know, and this, he's getting almost the same kind of collection of the same kind of results that he used to get earlier. So, uh, so the opportunities are immense and uh, companies are realizing that, you know, uh, the time is now to implement a lot of these things and uh, they are getting more and more open to doing this. Interesting. Ganesh, I want to understand from you uh, the nuances that you need to factor in when uh, you know, you're building such a product for Bharat as compared to, let's say, urban India. Yeah, I think first and foremost for Bharat, it has to be voice first. right? I think let's get that out of the way. Uh, secondly, it has to work for 
a person who only has a feature phone right secondly or rather thirdly it has to work definitely for his own language right or his own dialect rather right and uh, uh, you know in india you know that every you know 50 to 100 kilometers a dialect changes so your system should be able to understand and converse with you know every person in the real india right uh, and so these are like uh, challenges there another challenge that is people in india in particular and more in bharat tend to be multilingual you may think that a person say in chatisgarh would speak only hindi but no he would speak uh, english often right there are several english words would be interspersed so your bot or your you know automated systems need to be able to understand and also converse with them i mean i'll give you an example recently we uh, as a social endeavor we released a voice bot to record uh, you know the feelings of farmers towards a new farm bill so we just floated out a phone number for farmers to call in and they gave feedback Uh, you know what they like about the bill, what they don't like about the bill, and you know we go ahead and analyze all this kind of stuff. So it's very interesting. Uh, you know, firstly the acceptability of uh, our voice bots with uh, you know farmers say you know across the country. The second thing is uh, it's very interesting to see how people interact with systems, right? And we are really really convinced that this is the way that things are going to work. at least for the foreseeable future it has to be voice and you have to talk to people in their own language ganesh you did uh, touch upon the whole contactless thing uh, a little bit earlier so for my last question i want to sort of uh, understand from you and if you could go a little in in depth uh, as to how the pandemic has impacted the usage of conversational ai in the customer service space so i think uh, first and foremost uh, you know obviously unfortunate time but uh, it has uh, you know pushed organizations to rethink about customer service right i mean people are doing things in a certain way suddenly they had all their contact agents and you know chatbot assistants sitting out of their homes probably looking at you know pers- you know looking at personal customer information right from their homes not even sure it's a agent who's actually answering all this stuff so this has you know led to a whole new set of risks plus i mean it's the whole you know option of let's suppose you want to scale a particular business where do you hire from i mean uh, and you know how are you going to ensure that you know these agents or you know the folks that are handling customer service you know are, are the right people for this right so all this has led organizations to rethink this whole thing and say you know what maybe an automated uh, kind of customer mm-hmm. service maybe the right solution for all these kind of problems and soon when they tried a few of these solutions now they getting more confident to say hey this works right and uh, you know this is what we need to now use across the enterprise so uh, i would say uh, you know uh, what this has done is it has uh, you know really accelerated this digital transformation especially in the front office and uh, how organizations look at you know how we can use automated systems to solve some of these problems and to do these you know same problems with a higher level of efficiency so i mean we are working like i told you with you know very different set of use cases post the pandemic i mean uh, what i mean give an example of lead qualification right i mean bunch of customers say we got all these leads you don't know what to do with it right i mean and, how can i make sure that i just shortlist it into a smaller set of leads that we can process right and we have systems in place that use multiple things like speech recognition natural language processing voice bots and analytics thrown in to all this stuff and you know to do the analytics on the native language so all this helps to present a great you know i would say solution for customers and at a price that uh you know he's uh, you know definitely interested in getting into the space i mean for us personally it is great because now we get inquiries from all over the world for some of our solutions and uh, it's clear that you know conversational ai itself has got a uh, you know, significant boost uh, you know post uh, the pandemic very interesting on on that note ganesh we'll wrap up today's discussion thanks so much for sharing your insights with us today appreciate you taking the time off thanks for coming